Hello everybody, Everyman Prepping here. And today I want to talk uh, real quickly in a brief video here about the uh, BRICS nations and how Saudi Arabia is showing their intent to join and how this is going to basically um, help weaken the Western dominance of the petrodollar, uh, the reserve currency of the US dollar, and uh, you know why it's happening now. Uh, so if we look here at this article, it says the possibility of Saudi Arabia joining the BRICS uh, nations shows the world is moving on from Western dominance. Um, the South African president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, I believe it's pronounced, uh, he returned from Saudi Arabia earlier in this week and with the news that, you know, Saudi Arabia has intent on enjoining BRICS. So, you know, why would they want to enjoy, why would they want to join BRICS? Well, we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, it also says here, as, as I've talked in my other videos, Argentina and Iran have announced the same thing uh, last spring that they're intending to join. And then we also have to look, remember, um, Egypt and Turkey are thinking about it along, along with some of the stands, uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, some of the stands. But once again, on Turkey, not, I know they're NATO now, but not really a NATO ally. Uh, just keep an eye on Turkey. Like I've said before in previous videos, I don't trust Turkey. I think they'll eventually leave NATO. Um, you know, they're right now partnering with Russia to put a gas, the largest gas terminal for all of Europe in Turkey. And so, you know, just keep an eye on Turkey. I think they're going to leave NATO. They're not really an ally, in my opinion. So let's keep an eye on them. But uh, back here to Saudi Arabia and BRICS. I'll post this article uh, in the link down below so you can read it in great detail. I wanted to highlight just a few things here. And um, basically it's talking about, um, it says the events of 2022, meaning the, the Russian invasion, um, have clearly divided the world into Western parts that, and those in the East. And the West used the entire arsenal of pressure at its disposal to punish Moscow and demonstrate how disobedience is punished. They're talking about sanctions, you know, removing um, Russia from the SWIFT system, taking them off the banking system. So, you know, they're talking about all the ways you can be punished, you know, if you upset the West. And it says... The BRIC states, or those claiming a role in the world of their own, uh, not only distance themselves from the, joining the Western campaign, you know, they're not, really, they're not you know, full on board, uh, all those BRICS nations with what the U.S. did. They're not joining the sanctions. They're not joining, uh, stopping all trade with Russia. It says here, but they outright rejected it. They're rejecting all the stuff that NATO, the Ukraine Union, and the United States is, you know, asking them to do. Um, and it says they're rejecting it despite the fact that such a stance carries the risk of repercussions from the U.S. and its allies. They don't seem to care anymore because they know the U.S. dollar is dying and the petrodollar is dying. And Saudi Arabia knows they control that petrodollar, really. And so they don't have fear of it anymore. Um, now, it says, of course, this is not a matter of supporting Russia's actions. They're, you know, they're not doing this to support Russia's invasion. But it's rather a rejection, and this is from the article, it's a rather a rejecting the form of external pressure. They're saying... You know, we reject you, the West and how you pressure, how you make us do whatever you want. You know, the United States is that big bully, like I talked about, big bully in the playground. They push people around. They steal your lunch money. They tell you what to do. Um, you know, they tell you to uh, uh, jump, and they expect the country to say how high. So countries are getting tired of that. And this, you know, joining BRICS is part of that. It says, thus participation in BRICS becomes a sign of belonging to a world that is emerging beyond established Western dominance. It does not necessarily have to be about confrontation, meaning they're joining BRICS and not to support what Russia is doing militarily, confrontationally, but to be independent from the West, the pressures from the West, mainly the pressures from the United States. It says it is much more valuable to be able to bypass Western institutions and reduce the risk of interactions with them. They can bypass Western banking, Western sanctions by joining the BRICS system, you know, Russia has now their own banking system they're using with China. So, you know, other countries can join that and, you know, they can conduct all their banking and trade on those systems. They don't have to be part of SWIFT anymore. And it says, for example, by building parallel ways of conducting financial, economic and trade relations without relying on U.S. or EU controlled instruments. Just like I just said right before that, they can conduct all their trade and financial transactions country to country without using the United States or EU SWIFT system or anything else. They can do it independently, and if they can do that, the U.S. has no control over that. Countries are enjoying that. It also says, um, with talking about Saudi Arabia, it says, of course, a country with control over significant material resources, oil for Saudi Arabia, uh, and the ability to regulate global pricing on said oil, they can afford independent behavior and choose comfortable partners 
who do not impose a series of conditions or interactions. Meaning Saudi Arabia can choose partners in BRICS that do not impose conditions on their interaction. You know, that's you know, basically a free trade. They can trade how they want. So this is a, a huge, I wouldn't say a huge blow, but it's a huge red flag to, uh, I would say, to the United States and the EU saying, you know, these countries, they understand that, you know, they've been bullied too long and they're going to fight back. They're going to make their own way of doing business and it's not going to be punishable or reliable, reliant on the U.S. or EU systems, meaning the United States loses power. They lose the reserve currency. You know, they, they lose the, um, they hold the head on these countries. And I believe more and more countries are going to go that way. They're going to start joining BRICS, have more of a free trade. Uh, I talked about how the BRICS was even thinking of doing a barter system between each other. You know, trading from one country to another with just goods, not even involving money, so you don't have to switch it to another third currency to go between. They can just do straight uh, goods for goods deals, which is going to be a, a lot of beneficial for these guys. They can avoid sanctions that way. So, uh, in summary, this is just another nail in the coffin of the, uh, like I said, Western dominance, U.S. dollar, reserve currency. Um, as more countries join this, you know, like I said, we'll keep our on Turkey, Egypt, and the rest of the countries. As BRICS grows stronger, the U.S. gets weaker. And as you know what that means, that's bad for us here financially, uh, bad financial system here. But the U.S. is going to have to recover, and we're going to have to change our financial system and how we do business based on what's going on with the BRICS. So until next time, keep your ear to the ground, and head on a swivel.